Does Apple's unified memory absolutely destroy its Windows competition? Well, today we will find out once and for all with this ultimate multitasking RAM stress test. Both of these machines right here have 16 gigs of memory, but the Surface Laptop Studio also has a dedicated RTX graphics card that's four gigs of its own RAM, so it doesn't have to share the system memory, the, the DDR4X, which is the latest speed with this latest Intel processor running on Windows 11, compared to 16 gigs on our base 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook, which has to share that RAM with its 14 core graphics. Now, we ran a bunch of benchmarks, we did a comparison here, so we know our baseline results, and we are gonna start loading up different programs, background tasks, apps, uh, browser tabs, and see, does the Windows keep up, or is the Mac just absolutely gonna smoke it? So let's jump right in. Now, right out of the gate, I'm gonna restart both machines to make sure there's nothing extra running in the background, uh, nothing going on other than what I want. I love that Windows Hello that just logs me in without having to even put my hand on there. I let everything load up, including Adobe Creative Cloud and let's see how much RAM is used. It looks like our Mac is using 6.43 gigs just sitting here with the background programs open whereas the Windows is only using 5.1 gigabytes so less with Windows 11. Next, I went ahead and opened five tabs in the default browser, Safari and Edge, just to load up some stuff into the RAM. And then I loaded up another five tabs in Chrome, which is what I usually use. I have a couple IGN tabs here. This one right here has background video that auto plays, there's autoplay ads. I also have a YouTube video, which I'll often have running in the background for audio or watching minimize. So we have that playing. I also have our review of the M1 Pro MacBook Pros loaded up here. If you guys have not seen that yet, definitely go ahead and check it out. It's an excellent review. We've really tried to do a great job on that. And of course, Google Drive, which this takes up a good amount of RAM because there's a ton of stuff in my Google Drive. We'll go ahead and make sure everything is loaded up. And now look at that guys. We have 7.6 gigs used, 7.7 .7 on the Windows machine and a massive 12.15 gigs used on the MacBook. That is a lot more for the same exact applications and browser tabs. Since these aren't maxed out yet, let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. So it'll be one application in the background. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up 10 raw images that we're gonna get loaded into Photoshop. Right away, you guys saw how much faster that was on the Mac, but that could just be its performance in general. Now you see both these are unplugged, but the thing I love about the Surface Studio is the fact that it performs the same unplugged as it ha does plugged in just like the Mac, which is great. And we're gonna be comparing the performance compared to baseline, not just between the two. Zooming in so far into this image, Looks like we're not getting any slowdowns yet. When your RAM is filled up, sometimes it'll be really slow and jittery and, and laggy. And now look at this, we just had the tables turn. The max memory barely went up at 12.7 gigs compared to the Windows. We're at now 14 gigs, 13.9 of memory usage. So that shot up a lot. And now I'm launching Adobe Lightroom Classic and this is definitely a memory hog. We know it needs a lot of RAM. So now that we have our RAM mostly full, let's see if either of these machines slow down. Out of the gate, both of these performed identical, but look at this, guys. Look at how much longer it takes the Surface to switch photos compared to the M1 Pro. And the Mac is pretty much instant, where the Surface takes one to two seconds each time we're switching photos. That is pretty crazy because when we did our hands-on, both were identical, but as soon as we opened up those background applications, well, you guys see the difference for yourselves. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. All right, that was fast with both of the machines. And how about using the brush? All right, pretty nice and smooth on the Mac, just like it was before. And on the Windows machine, all right, you guys saw that lag at the beginning? and then it smoothed out. Now, gotta be honest, I did not think we would get a difference this early on in the video, whereas photo editing slowed down dramatically on the Windows machine. But now, before we export these, I wanna go ahead and open up our uh, monitoring software here. Looks like, all right, so what basically happens, we got rid of some of the RAM now, 
of the physical RAM. We went down from 14 to 12.8, but it looks like we're digging into the SSD now um, and we're having to use some swap. But the same thing goes for the Mac. Look at that, we're using seven gigs of swap now and 14 gigs of physical memory. But the crazy thing is I didn't even feel the swap on the Mac because it didn't slow down at all. So now let's go ahead and export these 50 edited raw images to JPEG and we'll see if these machines slow down compared to not having RAM filled up and by how much. I'm very excited to see these results. Export and bam, let's start our timer. Look at that, our memory use went up even more on both of them. Our CPUs are maxed out both on the Mac and on the Windows computer. The Surface is running at 4.3 gigahertz on battery, that is excellent. And our Mac is almost done. Let's see if it's close to the same performance as before. And we are done. All right guys, wow. Go ahead and guess your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I will tell you guys that the results are, both machines actually exported exactly as fast as they did before, which is very impressive. Of course, the Mac did this much quicker than the Surface, but the speed on the Surface was the same exact as having only Lightroom open. So even though the editing performance slowed down, which is actually where you spend the majority of the time, exporting has not slowed it down yet. So we're gonna go ahead and push these machines a little bit further and also look at things like video editing, which have to use graphics more so, and that might take a harder hit on the unified memory that has to be shared with the graphics instead of dedicated. Now, since we got into swap, I wanna check if these systems slow down as far as web browsing. I'm gonna go ahead and open my first set of tabs. So here you go, we're still open over here. Let's jump back to say our first page here. Okay, did you guys see that? Right away, the MacBook instantly opened up this tab, whereas the Windows laptop had to reload that. Let's go ahead and jump to our second tab. Same thing there. So it literally had to get rid of that to maintain performance in Lightroom. Bam, <laughs> once again. Okay, Wikipedia has to be easy, right? Oh, looks like I gotta search here. All right, so here, the, we didn't actually have Wikipedia open. That is interesting, okay. Well, what about Chrome? Um, I always use Chrome, I know a lot of you guys do. Let's open this up here. We have our Google Drive that stayed open on both, so that is great. It sucks when you're right there, so you have something opened up and then it resets. Let's go over to our document here. Reloading on the Windows laptop. How about our video here? All right, that one is actually slightly faster on um, the Windows machine. Halo Infinite, all right, had to reload quickly or pull from swap. And then once again, this had to pull from swap. So for some reason, YouTube, me either, maybe I clicked a little bit earlier, um, but yeah, it looks like this either had to pull from swap. Now, that is interesting, but one thing that you guys mentioned, you guys wanted me to test, is the responsiveness when you're actually exporting. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna run this export again and see how responsive the system is. First off, let's go ahead and launch Photoshop. Let's switch images. Dang, right there, almost twice as fast on the MacBook. Wow, once again, same thing. Literally, this one, MacBook's almost instant. This thing takes a couple seconds to switch. All right, let's jump back into Chrome here. Let's go to Google Drive. Did this screen dim or what? I don't know, I had auto brightness shut off. Let's go over here. Not too bad, it's taking longer to load. It's a little bit choppy, but of course, actually no, both of these have 120 hertz screens. I guess my other question is, is it gonna take way longer since we're pulling all this stuff now on the Windows system than the Mac. Overall, pretty good responsiveness from the Windows machine. Previously, when we did this test a while back, Windows 10, it would really slow down if you're doing something like exporting uh, photos. Now, the next thing that I wanna test is video editing with DaVinci Resolve, because as you guys saw, we're already using over 10 gigs of swap on our 16 gigabyte Mac. I mean, I don't blame it. We have 10 images and Photoshop. We have Lightroom, we have those Chrome tabs and Safari tabs and Edge tabs with background video, Google Drive, it's a lot of stuff. We have all this memory pressure built up. And since our Mac has to use that same 16 gigabytes of memory for the graphics card as well, 
is it gonna slow down dramatically compared to our previous tests when we just had DaVinci Resolve open, whereas the Surface, it has four gigs of extra dedicated memory. Let's go ahead and start out by just playing back this timeline. And look at that, guys. The Mac is playing back perfectly and it didn't even stutter at all. Whereas the Surface laptop, it started out with some frame drops, even though it has dedicated memory. Let's go ahead and pause. We'll play this back again. We have a couple lots applied. We have film grain applied. And yeah, every once in a while, we'll get a stutter loading up a new clip. That is interesting. Let's see if we can play this back in double time. Okay, not bad. There's still some frame drops. You guys see that right there. Uh, even though we have the dedicated memory and the RTX graphics card, it's not playing back perfectly. Now let's go ahead and export this project. We actually have our previous results saves right here. 254 on the Mac versus 426 for the Surface with the RTX graphics card. Right out of the gate, the Surface is going fairly slow. Wow, and our Mac, it seems like it might be going slower. I'm not sure yet, we'll wait for the results. Let's go ahead and quickly just take a look at our activity monitor. Wow, we are almost full of RAM use. We're using over 11 gigs of swap here and our GPU is only running at 55%. So it does look like we might be getting limited as far as graphics performance because we might not have enough memory, but we shall see. Now, right over here on the Windows machine, we're using 100% of that graphics card. Wow, the RTX is maxed out as you guys can see. Our Mac is done, which I know is gonna get done earlier, but look at this. It literally says we have 31 minutes remaining on the surface. How can that be? That is crazy. Our settings are identical to before. We're not at a battery. Uh, and it looks like our GPU is working at full performance. CPU is keeping up. Uh, RAM is definitely full. Now I looked up how to find swap on the Windows system and I got this thing right here where my, this is my full performance monitor. And look at this guys. It looks like, I don't know if I'm reading this right. You guys let me know. Are we literally using 39 gigabytes of swap right now on the Windows machine? It was lower, but once we got in DaVinci Resolve it, and started exporting, it bumped up. That is crazy where we're using 11 gigs of swap on the Mac. Now I'm not certain about that, but what I am certain about is the fact that this thing is going incredibly slow. So with the amount of time remaining and how long we've already been running this export, it looks like the surface is gonna take about 33 minutes or so to do this export, which is crazy because before you guys saw that it was just above four minutes and the Mac previously it took two minutes and 54 seconds and guess what even with all this swap it still took two minutes and 54 seconds which is incredible it didn't even slow down by one second and that is with Photoshop open Lightroom open all those tabs open we still have you know, a background video playing right here. Let's go ahead and flip through this stuff. Everything is still loading up really, really quick. Let's go back to Safari here. All right, we got our different Tesla pages. Look at that, guys. That is just crazy. Let's open up Lightroom. There you guys go. Let's go ahead and flip through photos. No problem there. Let's open up Photoshop. Still, look at that. We're literally just flying through these photos here. Now, I don't wanna wait another 27 minutes. Let me stop this export here. And I wanna do the same thing as that we just did with the Mac. Um, let's go ahead and open up Edge in this case. Let's flip through. Watch this guys, we're reloading these. Wikipedia search is fine. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome. Looks like some of this stuff is pulling back from swap, being slower. There you go. So instead of having instant response, we are pulling from the SSD. Now it's not as bad as it could be, but you guys saw that performance time. Let's open up Lightroom. Right there, we're slowing down. Look how long it's taken to load one photo. It went from instant to two seconds, and then that first one was, I don't know, four seconds or so? 
definitely everything's kind of slowing down. And look at this guys, look how slow everything is just trying to get through this timeline. And now guys, let's do an ultimate test right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this render once again in DaVinci Resolve, which uses up video memory. And then we're gonna jump into Lightroom. I'm gonna go and select all of these photos. This is gonna be our torture test. We're doing a really CPU intensive task as well as a really GPU intensive task with video memory being used as well as regular system memory. Let's see how these things perform and how responsive the systems are while we're doing this and maxing out um, the graphics in the CPU. So it looks like right away, our Windows machine is like locked up with the menu bars just sitting right there. Whereas the Mac, each time I go down, we have full responsiveness. Let's go ahead and try to launch Chrome on both of these. Bam. Let's open up Google Drive. Let's try to scroll. Let's open up our YouTube video. Look at that right there, instant on the Mac, even though we have both Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve running. Slow down on the Windows. Let's scroll down here. Ah, everything's reset. How about let's jump to our other tab here. Oh no, Power Saver just kicked in on the Windows. All right, I plugged that in right away. That's crazy how fast the battery drains on that sucker. We're rendering still, and we're getting just a little bit of slowdowns every once in a while. Oh, did it clear that? Did it clear that from the memory? As I scrolled down, it literally removed what was at the top. Let's move to this tab. Oh, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Wow, it closed Google Drive there too. It had to close it down. Oh wait, wow, okay. The Mac is done with the export. That was fast. And the Windows machine is not even halfway there. It should have been done by now uh, based on previous speed, but it looks like it slowed down by about Oh, at least, at least half the speed or more. Wow, the Mac's done for the video expert as well. This time it did slow down when we were doing both Lightroom and DaVinci Resolve and messing with the system, but it only took one second longer than before. Where here, uh, I guess time-wise, it looks like it's about the same um, as far as a super long export, very long. But wow, while this Windows machine is going, I wanna get an accurate result on our Mac. We're still in battery power. Look at that, we're at 70% battery. This one dipped to 20 when we were doing the same tests throughout this video. That is crazy. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're gonna export the same thing. I'm gonna start DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna run that again. Yep, we're gonna re-render. And then I'm gonna go back into Lightroom I'm gonna export this one more time because I wanna get an accurate result compared to how long Lightroom took on this Surface laptop because we're definitely seeing some crazy slowdowns now. All right, the Surface is done, at least with Lightroom. For DaVinci, we still have another, what is it, 25 minutes or so, no, but Lightroom is finished. And on the Mac, we are exporting that video while at the same time we are exporting uh, the Lightroom photos as well. And it looks like they might get done at maybe roughly the same time. The surface is blowing hot air all across the Mac right now, actually right where the intake is, which is not a great thing, but I don't think it matters because look at this performance, guys. I honestly was not expecting the Mac to do this good. I thought at least in this test with the video memory, having to use the same 16 gigs instead of having it dedicated, slow down, but Bam, oh my goodness. DaVinci Resolve just finished. Lightroom finishes what, same time. Same time, all right, stop that. All right guys, crazy. Resolve is still running here. It looks like we have another, what, 20 minutes, 20 and a half minutes left for a video when we're here. It literally just did two exports of each. Uh, this thing has still a while to go. So it looks like under this crazy load, when we have 14.6 gigs of swap running, uh, and we have Lightroom open, and we have Photoshop open right here. Let's open up Lightroom. Look how quick it opened up right there. And we have our Safari open, and we have our Chrome open. Did anything close down? Nothing closed down. Look at that, everything is still there. While that was happening, our video exported in two minutes and 56 seconds. That is two seconds longer than only having to resolve and nothing else. Keep in mind, 
That's also with Lightroom running in the background the whole time as well, exporting a vi uh, the photos. And Lightroom, instead of taking one minute and 44 seconds, it took two minutes and 17 seconds. That only took 33 seconds longer in Lightroom and two seconds longer in DaVinci Resolve when we literally ran both at the same time. They finished at basically the same time as well with all that stuff open in the background. Meanwhile, the Surface, instead of taking four minutes and 26 seconds, the video export has taken about 32 minutes or so, still has a long way to go, and obviously Lightroom is not running anymore, so that helps it out. But <laughs> that was a huge slowdown. And then the Lightroom at the same time, instead of taking two minutes and 50 seconds, it took five minutes and 23 seconds. So almost twice as long, uh, instead of taking two seconds longer. And then of course it's still running. You guys saw the battery life percentages as well where we were looking at 70% compared to this one, it was a 20, I had to plug it in. Uh, so that is a crazy difference. And then you guys saw how much Lightroom slowed down even before opening up video editing and all of the reloading of the tabs and slowdowns on the system. So there you guys go. I was thinking about you know pushing these even harder, but I don't think I need to. Look at the fans, <laughs> they're crazy. They're like warming my hands up. Yeah, the, the truth is unified memory on Apple's M1 systems, the M1 Pro especially, and this is the base one with the bin CPU, the bin graphics, 16 gigs absolutely destroys Windows 11 with 16 gigs of memory, plus a dedicated graphics card that has its own dedicated memory. So when people say that having the shared memory is a bad thing with these Macs, and that's gonna slow down the systems, and if you load up the RAM, it's gonna slow it down incredibly, that is simply untrue. This thing was stable. You guys saw how fast everything loaded up, how responsive the system was, how little performance was lost when we were doing all of that with tons of swap being used. We saw 12 gigs of swap used. Right now, 14.45 gigs of swap. Everything is still super quick, super responsive, and the performance is almost the same, even when exporting photos and videos at the same time, which is insane. I mean, I knew it was gonna perform well. I did think this is where it was gonna fall apart, but it didn't. And on the Windows side, after all of that, we're still, what, like two thirds only done with this export? It is incredible. Um, yeah, so if you're gonna want a system, and this is the price point that you have, we have $2,000 right here for the Mac, $2,100 for this Windows system, and you can only afford 16 gigs of RAM, definitely Mac is the way to go. This memory is extremely fast, and Mac OS with Monterey works incredibly well with this setup. So there you guys go. Share this video with the PC fanboys that say that uh, shared memory is horrible, that slows down, that it's not the right way to go. Obviously, you guys see the real world results. So thank you guys for watching. Help us reach our goal of a million subscribers. We would definitely appreciate it because about the 70% or so of you guys are not subscribed. You guys can click above to help join the Max Tech Squad. Check out one of those great videos over there. Check out our M1 Pro review. That was an amazing video. This is Max and I'll see you in the next one.